I want to welcome you this afternoon to a time of celebration of life. I want to first of all say that I uh, appreciate the attendance today. And in times, and I just shared this with uh, Desiree, that um, sometimes at certain periods of time or sometimes uh, just in general, life gets a little hectic for people and it becomes a little difficult for them to cut out a little while. But you've done that. And I want to say to you from Desiree and the family how much we appreciate you being here today. We've gathered to, uh, to care and love on each other, uh, to try to understand and make some sense from Nathan's home going. Any words that I speak today, I know will not be sufficient enough to bear healing and what we just want to do is to just our very presence here to love on each other and help. Paul recognized the difficulty of this moment. And the Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Thessalonica. And in it, he spoke some profound words. He said, I don't want you to be ignorant. Brothers and sisters, concerning those who have fallen asleep. The early church couldn't even use the word death. So Paul used the term falling asleep. Lest you sorrow, here it is folks, lest you sorrow like those who have no hope. Now, Paul didn't say we don't shed tears. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I have shed my own. So I'm not here to tell you this is not time that you you feel remorse, you feel void, you feel a lot of emotional feelings. Paul said we don't do it like those who have no hope. Here, here's the reason. The next verse, this is what he says. For if you believe that Jesus died and that he rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. I don't want to discredit the scripture, but let me read it this way. For if you believe that Jesus died and he rose again, even as God will bring Nathan with him, who's now fallen on sleep in Jesus, he will be united together with us again. If we believe. Paul simply said, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, you believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, then you are saved. That's what Nathan believed. And more than believing it, he practiced it to the letter of everything within him. We're also here together to celebrate. To, to celebrate a life well lived. Most of us in this room have some kind of connection with him. Somehow you knew him. I knew him as Nathan. But I found that he has a lot of AKAs. Nathan, Jeremiah, Nathaniel, Boog, Hubbin, Awesome Daddy, Son, grandson, nephew. By at least one member in our congregation, he was known by Brian. It's a kind of like inside arena of understanding. But in all of that, he was known to me as a faithful young man and a personal friend. He's known by all of us in this room by a smiling caring, helpful, loving attitude. In the obituary, it read, he was an example of never stopping and never giving up 
that is the gospel truth. When you look at him today and realize that he is in the presence of the Lord, there is a celebration. We've just come through the celebration of Thanksgiving. Yesterday, Thanksgiving. Today is known by business personalities as Black Friday. Growing up, I always thought black meant bad, something dreary about that day. But the truth is that it is a day when business personalities pray that they move from the column of loss, or in red, that's in there, to a column of black where there is gain. I'll mention a little more about that in a few moments because really in this day, Nathan has combined both Thanksgiving and Day of Gain. Before I share about that, though, I would like for us to listen to a song. A song that will depict, in my mind at least, with my imagination, how it must be for him to be experiencing today on the other side. What he must be doing. Knowing all the limitations he had, all the struggles he had, and all of those gone, what would it be like? After that song, you'll be given an opportunity for anyone in this room today that would like to come up and share your story, your Nathan's story. You can come and stand with me and be sure to speak into the mic because all of that will be recorded for Desiree and her family so that they'll be able to remember back what you have said. So let us pray. Dear Lord, how honored I am to stand here and to honor the life of one well lived, to recognize all that he has accomplished in the short years of his life. Lord, I know there was someone else who did the same, and you were proud of that one and called him your son. And today, Lord, you call you call Nathan your child. I pray that you would help us to somehow with our mental thoughts and our understanding for a few moments that somehow we can focus our understanding and grasp what must have happened and what is happening in your presence. We pray it in your wonderful son's name. Amen. Or in all of you. 
my knees will I fall will I sing hallelujah will I be able to speak it all I can only imagine yeah I can only imagine surrounded by your glory what I can only imagine. That was one of his favorite songs, along with all those that you've heard played in the background of the music uh, or the pictures that were shown. They've been just expressions of what he and Desiree worshiped with and even in this room. If you'd like to share something, I'm gonna wait for a moment for you to come. I know you may be reluctant to stand on a stage, but the only way we can do is get that videoed for her is by you coming and standing here if you'd like to. I'll wait for just a moment. Anyone? <laughs> Come on, babe. Come over here. Hi. <coughs> um. There's so many moments that I got to spend with Nathan. You're fine. And uh, the one I wanted to share with you guys is uh, whenever Nathan and I were engaged, um, I remember I was afraid that I was going to lose him uh, because he was having plasmapheresis and everything. He was in kidney rejection. And uh, just being 20 years old, almost 21, um, I was in my room on the phone with him and I was crying to him because I was like, you know, I love you so much. I just don't want to imagine life without you. And uh, I remember he told me, he said, you know, you're 20, I'm 20. If, if I die today and you live to be 100, that's 80 years. And I'm like, yeah, that's 80 years. He was like, what's 80 years compared to eternity? And, and it's just, I, I'm gonna quote, like probably badly quote, one of his favorite Doctor Who's. It's, um, <laughs> some people view time as a strict progression of cause to effect, but in reality it's from a non-linear, non-subjective standpoint, it's more like a big ball of wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey stuff. <laughs> and, and I think that, that perspective, it, it changes a lot. And just, I've always said he was a living, breathing example of Jesus in my life. Mm -hmm. You know, just that never stopping, never giving up, unbreaking, always and forever love. And, and my life's better for having known him and for being honored to be his wife. Someone else.
Des just said she was honored to be his wife. Well, I was honored to pronounce them husband and wife. You might have seen some of the slides. And there was this beautiful young couple, bride and groom, and there was an old guy standing next to him. That was me. So, but it'll always be an honor. I've done weddings since yours, but you guys will always have been the very first wedding. And Nathan was so practical about it. He asked me, because I didn't go to seminary, I didn't become ordained under some mainline denomination. He said, if you marry us, will it count? And I said, I think so, but let me check. And we actually went to the courthouse to find out, and uh, yeah, it counts, so. Uh. But for a skinny guy, he could sure hug hard, couldn't he? Man, he had bear hugs. Uh, Nathan fought the good fight. Yes. Boy, he sure did. He, he finished the race, and I know we all wish some races could be longer than they were. I know that myself, but he kept the faith. Mm. And, and all I can do is encourage you to keep the faith. Des told me when, we were, when Nathan was still in Erlanger, and I thought, this is remarkable for a young wife to say this. He says, you know, no matter how this turns out, Nathan wins. That will always stick with me, of all the things we've discussed over the time and stuff. Either way, Nathan wins. And for the believer, which we all know Nathan was, life here is just a vapor. Like he said, so what? 80 years, we cling to so much so tightly here. And life is such a vapor. So whether it's one year or 101 years, compared to eternity, it's like that. I just want to share a couple words to a song. I don't have it memorized, but it's a, it's a Big Daddy Weave song called Neighborhoods. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but this just hopefully will encourage us all today. Because you know one day I will fly to my mansion in the sky, and I'll have no regrets when I leave this place for good. When I say my last farewell, oh, please don't forget to tell them that I'm not really dead. I'm just changing neighborhoods. And that's what he's doing. He's transitioned into a neighborhood, and as long as we know the Lord, we'll all get to move into that neighborhood with him. So keep the faith, sweetie. God bless you all. Great. Someone else? Anyone? While he's coming, come on up. There's someone else that wants to come and want to stand in prepare preparation to come up. Please do so. So that can only keep us moving here. That's great. I was a friend of Nathan from um, church when they went to New Horizons over in Calhoun. <clears throat> and I, I realized right away that Nathan was a, you know, capable person. I can see, uh, you know, just people bringing things to Nathan. And I know that uh, Desiree's probably going to look around in the house and see whose is this and whose is that the things that have been brought to Nathan to here heal this computer and he'll fix that and you know one thing that Nathan uh, I, I never heard Nathan or even saw an expression on Nathan's face that that indicated that it couldn't be